Hello everyone. Welcome to all the many new subscribers. I'm really um, thrilled to tell you we got, gained almost 15% of increase in subscription over the last week alone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lovely to have you here on that site where you learn about the amazing sacred geometry which is happening as we speak every moment with all the different cosmic players these characters in that big soap opera which happens kind of parallel to our reality mirroring what is going on down here that's how we have to see it it's, it's not really that they do anything to us these planets and cause us to act in certain ways it's synchronicity that means it's quantum entanglement i guess is the closest explanation we can have for that effect and actually you know that quantum entanglement is probably the most brilliant and mind-blowing in discoveries i guess is the word i should say we have made as a species which shows and einstein is the one who really has been revealing this secret which says that if two particles atoms electrons whatever um, you call it have been together at once in one moment in the whole field of time all of past present included if they had been for one moment together they would resonate on the same frequency regardless if they travel to the far ends of the universe <laughs> quite remarkable that means there is a a recognition going on this is part of me in a way uh, you start falling into the same frequency this happens if every atom we get in touch with now what really blew my mind and i really think this story i want to quickly relate it it's what the great deep insight i had at the fukushima event the fukushima um, cataclysm atrocity whatever you want to call it catastrophe all of the three probably so within days they could measure those radioactive atoms particles isotopes all over the planet within days what does that say it says that this one single spot on the planet pushing out fumes of a particular nature which can be traced and this is the secret really uh, the, the the kind of the the little twist there which um, turns everything upside down in a way so yes there is definitely biologically negative implications if you get in touch with strong radiation however there is a big question mark about the evolutionary acceleration which happens at the same time uh, i mean just um lately after this is now thinking of chernobyl for a moment which happened in 1986 so that's now something like 38 years since and lately um some camera teams went to that location and nature is exuberant in an un expected way everything is doing great in that sense has adapted to the frequency has actually been boosted by the frequency anyway i'm not saying this is a good thing i'm just saying this is a unexpected side effect and one of the other unexpected side effects was what i just said that recognition that regardless where you are on the planet if you're in mount everest or if you are down at the south pole or if you are in wherever town city you are living in within days we each of us got part of these radioactive particles into our body was unavoidable so this shows you how everything is totally interconnected all the time hmm? so you breathe out and 
within days yes it might take a little longer because your output is much smaller than that um, whatever it was those um, uh, reactors which exploded and, and released all that um, radioactive vapor steam into the atmosphere but still eventually our part of who of what has been us at some point mm? our physical form what we pervade with our personal frequency we kind of put a stamp on it mm? that's how you have to see it and then wherever these two particles are they still are connected so this is really the amazing little side effect i wanted to share you because what we are talking about here today is literally about that about that cosmic oneness we all are in that same universe and we are resonating on a collective frequency with everything and all included and so anyway i stop babbling <laughs> Let's get real here. So today we had the biggest solar flare since March 10. You remember March 10? That was the 7.4 flare. You probably don't remember. I also have to look it up because time move is so dense. So many things are happening. I don't even remember exactly what yesterday was happened i guess we all are experiencing this extreme compression of time so much is happening in such short sequences so many stories are running parallel that was short after the new moon and we will get to that new moon because this is really was the starting point of this four week period kind of preparing us for the big eclipse which definitely will be a game changer there's no question all astrologers anonymously agree on that everybody says this is probably the strongest celestial event we will we had since more than 100 years for sure one of my friends compared it to 1918 she definitely has done the research on that so that tells you it is a big event we are getting ready for it now this was the 7.4 flare and then today we have the 3.5 flare and again mercury is highlighted you see in the other one just i'm um, quickly repeating that once more for those of you who haven't seen my last video that was short after new moon and um as magical as it can be uh, sun and moon were perfectly overhead the zero meridian when that big flare went off and mercury just had entered aries the first sign of the zodiac this is big and mercury will be in aries from then on march the 10th it was till may the 15th yes just wanted to check my notes that is exactly what it is so this is an unusual two months and five days mercury usually goes around the whole zodiac at least as seen from the sun in less than three months and in earth time <clears throat> it kind of is always kind of swaying around the solar position naturally because it's an inner planet much closer to the sun so it never gets too far away from it so anyway the long story short mercury by average is around 30 days in each sign you could say like the sun by average but this time it's more than double than that in aries and aries is a great great placement for mercury everything everything you can imagine and see started once with a thought contemplate on that yes you first have to have an idea a conception a thought and then you're wanting to make that thought real you put it in form but everything starts at the primordial level as a divine spark and that was, that is what mercury is in aries mercury is really in the phase of creation mercury being the mental construct but much more than that it is also the planet of of a perception 
it is kind of that mirror that reflection which is happening in the lake of our minds you could say hmm? it's that interaction of fire and water which causes that dynamic play um, which is constantly changing it's a chaotic motion really if you watch the solar rays reflecting on a lake i mean it's mesmerizing it's a beautiful beautiful image that is how we are absorbing uh, what is occurring around us and then processing it and making our own story about it and then out of this we become creative and apply what we have seen and this is all happening the next two months and 10 days will be enormously it's now actually exactly two months 16th to the 15th of may so for two months more we are given a very special permit permission to dream something new into creation and that's exactly what is happening yes there will be many um side events dark ones for sure that that much is, that much is clear with all the chiron energy we have to go through that phase of plutonic remodeling in that sense really um uh, detonating the old building as 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 extreme as this might sound that's what will be happening in big ways so really be ready i mention it again shortly here but please go back to my other video that's just the last one the critical period is april 7 april 7 till may the 3rd that is when jupiter will join uranus in hexagram 23 which is defragmentation you could call it falling apart splitting apart collapse all that uh, is uh, yes it's a, it's one of the most clear meanings in the whole 64 hexagrams of the i ching it's it's one of the with the most obvious expression of itself which all this is the breakdown is bringing the breakthrough because breakthrough is at the other end of the zodiac in that sense which is interesting it is that opposition of taurus hexagram 23 and scorpio hexagram 43 collapse and breakthrough hmm. and what chart do i have here okay i really should enlighten you this is intentional always please pay attention to what i have here in the corner i always put here a chart which kind of is um, a common denominator of what is happening if you could call it that way i rarely speak about it i just leave it there as a frequency also for myself a reference point so this is the first initial eclipse which happened in 1501 of this saros series which the april 8 total solar eclipse will be part of every solar eclipse belongs to a particular family and that family manifests over around 13 centuries every 18 years producing a solar eclipse and in between actually the, uh, every 13 years from the solar eclipse and five years to the next solar eclipse in between is always a lunar eclipse it's a very exact pattern and 13 8 and 5 as you know these are these are um fibonacci number yes the 18 is kind of a combination of the two in an unusual way but it also re resonates but the five and the 13 for sure so these are the two hexagrams we are dealing with this is the intensity of our times uranus already has been in that energy since may 2023 and will leave this hexagram by june the 7th so this might be a good idea to think of june the 7th as a fundamental shift in frequency 
up to then we are under that um, kind of ominous um, warning of also of shock and thunder this is actually a, a really interesting combination so on one side is collapse and defragmentation on the other it is shock and thunder which the lunar nodes are activating here in Aries the lunar north node started on January the 8th goes all the way into May the 12th see pretty close 15 12 so around uh, mid-may that's another big shift in frequency so the lunar nodes in these two hexagrams this is a super powerful time as you probably can tell i mean we already am um, two months plus in that in this sequence 51 shock founder 57 the south node being resources is clarity and perceptional how everything can be penetrated easily it's the wind upon the wind the double wind and wind is the career of spirit so there's it's really a it's cause shows uh, kind of what i ex ex um, uh, talked about just at the beginning of the show today about the um the quantum entanglement and each particle of air each atom of whatever oxygen nitrogen and all the other um, tiny bit of other gases in it and eventually an, an, um, a, a, a charged particle a radiating particle <laughs> which can be then used as a marker yes you get the story so that is um, the energy we are uh, getting fed with which is in abundance there uh, if we just uh, uh, have the courage to live and go beyond fear and that is actually the one um, headline which I read in one of the pages about the hexagrams is that the gene keys also naturally it's the same thing I don't go that down that rabbit hole, rabbit hole for now this is I guess you have to just allow that to be there gene keys and hexagrams oracles of the I Ching is the same thing life begins where fear ends I really liked that that is the signature of 51 of shock thunder it's all about individual individual initiative it's actional purely actionable the degrees um uh, 11 to um sorry 15 15 to 20 is actional yes it's the second 15 degrees starting here actional emotional cultural and individual mental it's these three sections again that's something i repeatedly talk about so just let it um, go and um, don't hang on to every word i'm telling you it's very dense my um, lectures i know so that's why i also sometimes suggest if you um, want to just stop it and continue tomorrow that is definitely one of the options so anyway you get the general picture of the time we are in so jupiter will uh, join uranus in hexagram 23 from may sorry from april the 7th till may the 3rd so this is a relatively short window hmm? but um naturally you can tell this will be the core of the cyclone the centerpiece uh, expect big stuff to come down in those few weeks so okay let's continue um uh, uh on actually one more thing i want to say about the eclipse we are getting uh, towards and as we speak of it let's just quickly pull it up i won't go too deep for now just saying that much 
It is part of this Saros series 139, started in 1501 with a Gemini new moon. And that totally resonates. I really liked that as I had planned to talk about this with today's solar flare. You see that brings pretty much that exact, exact degree of Gemini 450 here with um, the sun and moon here to the center of the sky globally so this energy is definitely pervasive and is starting to become recognized by many many more people so i'm um, sorry um, <laughs> too many things at once here this is what i wanted to point out you see that is where heliocentric mercury was at the moment of the flare at 4 35 pm here you have it maybe i quickly should pull that up that was this is already 17th of March here in um, uh, zero time. But today on the 16th at 16.35 we saw this flash here on the eastern edge of the sun. Well, I didn't see it but definitely it's been reported by satellite and the internet has it on many places already. That's the wonderful thing about the internet as you all know. It gives us every information at the instant it is occurring happening at least observations of nature and such are uh, really this is a really great service you get to know what is happening and naturally these are big energy pulses which are released by the sun and that flare as you uh, saw there in the movie this is earth this is planet earth here you could think of the sun being here at the center as this is the heliocentric chart here you see and from earth we look at the sun and the flare occurred here on this corner just a little more than 90 degrees away from earth just behind the limb and naturally you see that is the direction mercury is in and mercury moves pr pretty fast over the next few days moves through this zone and receives the full blast again. Um, that's not the first time this has happened so many times lately. It's really the sun is profoundly intelligent. It's a sentient being. It sends these energy waves in the right moment, in the right direction, at the right dosage. Everything is perfect to the single photon i would say it is that again resonance with sacred geometry which i guess the easiest way to explain it is this is the structure of the quantum universe of the quantum vacuum of empty space it's a crystallized energy field you could call it it's sacred geometry it's like this beautiful pattern which show up if you resonate sand on a plate all these patterns and it's all the frequencies together they are all potentials within the quantum vacuum and then they are resonated into form that's how it has to be seen and that is what divine intelligence is it is that access to that multi-dimensional crystal field of information and understanding and perspective mercury is the god's messenger as it says hermes the trickster the magician in the tarot number one card of the seven of the 22 major arcana the magician magus magus the wizard the one who is able to read what is happening around and tune into it and maximize its outcome by intentionally interfering at exactly the right spot makes me think of that guy who um, was called in to repair a ship which um, no um, no um, 
any 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 of the specialists who worked uh, with the machinery could figure it out and this one guy said well i can do it and my fare is whatever ten thousand dollars and he came and they were agreeing okay and if you can fix it yes nobody has made it he comes in takes his little hammer just meditates um, uh, to to really get in tune and touch in in synchronicity with the ship picks up its frequency and then he hits one spot with his little hammer and everything works again <laughs> i love i love that story and, and naturally there's the argue about the pay because now he only worked for two seconds not even and then now he gets ten thousand dollars is that fair well you decide <laughs> It's the magic of this universe. Again, this is the Gemini energy we definitely feel here from this heliocentric Mercury in these present days. Okay, let me see how far I get here before it's getting too um, too long for you. But um, yeah, some of you tell me, please don't make it shorter. <laughs> yes, I um, understand you and I understand all the other folks who probably get a bit overwhelmed by all my um, different stories which I share all at once and all the naturally the 40 different characters in this cosmic soap opera anyway this was the new moon I really will be fast I really want to just point out the most important things in these charts so this was just hours before that 7.4 flare we, we have seen and the ascendant here when the moon was exactly perfectly aligned with the sun 429 Gemini just go back to this chart here that um, mother chart of that eclipse which is coming on April the 8th so we're totally getting attuned to the energy it's very obvious now the fifth degree of Gemini I really liked that uh, let me see where I wrote it down it's joy and power of new beginnings hmm, how about that <laughs> I don't think so this is I don't think this is degree but it sounds very similar let me look it up because it is uh, an important one too keep in mind right this is the one a revolutionary magazine asking for action <laughs> okay revolution did you hear that word actually m Mars by heliocentric position here in this new new moon chart is in hexagram 49 revolution so there's revolution in the air seemingly and that revolution is here in the space chart of this eclipse too and it is um, uh, um, as the keynote says the explosive tendency of repressed feelings and root emotions oh okay explosive feeling does that match with some major event seismically or what not i guess it's earth really getting to that point where all that has been repressed hold back is uh, releasing at once that's kind of where i think we are going and it says here in the description of this degree every movement over stressing one direction calls forth in time an equally extreme movement in the opposite direction hmm okay something to consider to think about so this is the base energy for the whole next six months you could say at least till the next um, solar eclipse some astrologer claim eclipses have a, a, an, um, a resonance for at least one year or even two so there's always multiple layers of realities of um, uh, unveiling themselves at different speeds that adds to the, mul the multi-dimensionality of reality and each of us tunes slightly into different bands therefore gets slightly different experiences this new moon was in the scorpionic dwarf of pisces hmm? 
and the Scorpionic Decan too. Lots of Scorpio here. Pluto at Midheaven. How a bit about that? <laughs> I guess again we can feel it if you know what to um, uh, what to um, expect. And Pluto is about change, about fast moving change, and it's really juggling with three or four balls at once, and it's all about connecting to the people you are meant to work with together. This that Aquarian energy which really kicked in on that new moon. That is now just five, six days since and this is the base energy again I again want to emphasize that for the whole next month into April the eighth. This is what holds the ground you could say. And then um, naturally the North Node Chiron is the kind of the the vortex of the chart as, as the North Node always is kind of how it brings that energy into a chart. It's a dynamic axis. I like to compare it to a rocket rushing through the static of your frequencies, your energies that is the the, the the real vector of evolution the that arrow which pulls us in a, a, towards the future towards what we are meant to become and again this is um i mean yes i didn't mention this yet chiron is in hexagram 51 shock founder already since at least a year or more and will be in here at least for another year so Karen has been warming up this energy, this area for the lunar node to come in. And naturally Mercury will be in this hexagram when it will um, uh, re, um, uh, move forward again on the 25th of April it will be exactly in the 16th degree of Aries. And the 16th degree of Aries is um, another one I wanted to give you the basic meaning for as it totally resonates it's the last degree actually no sorry it's the first degree of the second half of the zodiac as you if, oh, <laughs> the zodiac of the sign Aries sorry so 15 degrees and then another 15 degrees again the, the three um, fold sequences actional for the first five emotional, cultural, individual, mental, actional degrees, yes, these are definitely and in that first degree of the second half of Aries, which is all about potency. Nature spirits are seen at work in the light of sunset. Beautiful. Attunement to the potency of invisible forces of nature. Hmm? That's exactly where we are at. We are connecting with the invisible frequencies of which connects us all. That's really the whole magic of it. It's 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 a it's a resonance field you're tuning and you become you're becoming part of an orchestra. You're starting to hear the music around you and you're learning to sing a tune with that music which harmonizes, which makes the symphony even richer, even more beautiful. I guess that's the whole thing and it's about listening, about tuning into very, very Piscean. This is of picking up the and then tuning in. So we are really attuning to this um, eclipse as of the 8th of April. Well, I think I leave it at that because uh, that's already a lot. Maybe uh, uh, one more, uh, one or two more words to this new moon chart as it's really at the bottom, at the base of whatever is unfolding this year, this, this month. 
It was a super moon, right? I should mention that one more time. That means just two hours prior at seven hours in the morning UT, the moon was exactly closest to the Earth to Earth. Hmm? In that sense, really amplifying that that impact on us all emotionally and also physically as the moon is connected to the water in our body definitely emotionally and physically this is a, a strong strong um, influence when the moon is strong we all know that <laughs> Okay, and then what else was there? Um, right. So, um, let me see. Right, I think, you see, this is the other thing. Right, I wanted to hint that that is then the global ascendant, the, the degree which rises in Greenwich at the Zero Meridian Greenwich again being exactly one seventh of uh, of the full arc of 360 degrees one seventh above the equator in that sense really a very special point on the um, Zero Meridian that's why I choose this place it's also the Royal Observatory which is the oldest in our present time culture the oldest observatory we know of which has been in um in um in function in um whatever <laughs> sometimes sometimes i'm missing words you know you forgive me i'm not originally speaking english as you certainly know anyway um so this is the same axis a 15 16 degree um libra and aries 16 degree um, aries again to say it once more nature spirits seen at work and the keyword here is repotentialization repotentialization mm, that's a difficult one in the light of personal fulfillment, a symbol of sunset and wisdom. Hmm. So we are really at the place where we can say we are seasoned warriors. We have gone through many things. And it is that place when you have seen it all, then nothing can surprise you anymore. Then you really are able to just absorb, take whatever comes your way and zoom in on it whatever it is which approaches you with your eyes and as you're there in your full attention like driving it's like a race car driver i often like to compare it to that or if you sit in a in a canoe in a white water raft you're having your eyes fixed there where where you're going and it is that intention and that openness to receive whatever comes your way which gives you the intelligence to do the right thing in harmony in synchronicity with that energy which is coming at you you just redirect it into a boomerang the 16th degree of libra yes that is the not the last one here i want to add in before i stop for now here we are reconstruction if the is the big word of the second part of libra and again for you guys who are new i'm referencing here and reading from the rudyard's sabian symbol astrological mandala the 16th degree of libra after a storm a boat landing stands in need of reconstruction The need to keep in operation 
steady links between the vast unconscious and the ego consciousness. So it is, yes, definitely allegorically as also very real to be understood after a big storm things get damaged the boat landing needs repair so it is that intersection between man and the universe the greater unconscious as represented again by the water by the sea this that interface which has to be um, reset we have to attune in to what needs to be improved in order to also increase the access to the ocean hmm? you could also call it that way now this is kind of the basic theme and um just want to give something away here quickly i will go back to this chart definitely this is the uh, a super powerful one we will talk several times of that but for now i just want to throw in well i don't think i have a tansy here ready it will have to wait thank you for joining and listening and then um, talk to you soon okay here we go, that is the one I want to pull up, but I will have to, it will have to wait till next time. Okay, love you all, thank you for being here.